Hi everyone, welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I want to show you an awesome tool that can make your AI have long-term memory, remember past conversations, and become more effective in coding. Let me introduce you to Byte Rover. So just recently, I discovered a powerful tool that lets my coding agent recall important knowledge from past conversations. This means I can bring in context from previous developments and use it seamlessly in my current session. This solution has transformed the way I code with AI, helping me code faster and have less errors. Instead of wasting time re-explaining my project, my AI agent can automatically recall the required project context, like design patterns and best practices, and then work with that context in mind. So in this video, I'm excited to share with you this solution. Byte Rover is a tool that serves as a self-improving AI memory layer that allows you to create and share key memories across your projects. You can think of it as a single memory space that you can connect to all your AI coding agents such as Klein, Rucode, or Cursor. When you have Byte Rover installed, every key information from your interaction will be stored in a centralized space, and when you send a request to the AI agent, it can retrieve this key information and provide relevant responses drawn from that information. Through Byte Rover's MCP, you can connect memory layers saved in Byte Rover across different AI IDEs. You can create coding memories once and use it across different IDEs, different projects, and even different teams. Just recently, Byte Rover also reached number one as the product of the day in Product Hunt, so it's definitely an interesting product with a lot of potential. Now, the problem with AI coding agents like Klein or Cursor is that they have limited memory capacity. When you interact with AI for a long time and then start a new chat, they will promptly forget everything in the previous conversation. Let me show you a practical example. Here, I have VS Code with Klein already installed as the coding agent. Now, suppose that I want to always use Tailwind CSS for all my projects, I can try to let Klein know about this in the chat. Just say something like, I want to always use Tailwind in my projects, and then press enter. Now, let Klein process the request for a moment, and now it has finished processing the request. Notice that here, the AI says it has recorded my preference to use Tailwind CSS for my projects. Going forward, all projects will have Tailwind implemented. Okay, now let's open a new chat here, and then ask Klein to build a landing page for a SaaS company. I will say use plain HTML to simplify the task. Now press enter and let Klein think again for a moment. And you can see here that it will create a landing page using plain HTML and CSS, but I actually want Klein to use Tailwind. So I will skip a bit to when this request is finished. Alright, here we can see that Klein generated HTML and CSS files, and in that CSS file, it uses vanilla CSS classes, even though I already said that I want to use Tailwind for all my projects. This is a common issue when working with AI agents, they always forget past instructions as soon as you start a new chat. The memory is isolated to that single chat session. Now, to solve this issue and help the AI remember key information across sessions, we're going to use Byte Rover. To get started with Byte Rover, you can simply go to its website at byterover.dev, I will leave a link in the description as well, and then click on this Get Started button. You will be asked to sign in with an account, I will use my Google account here, and once you're signed in, you will see Byte Rover's dashboard where you can create organizations and memory workspaces. By default, Byte Rover will generate one organization for you, and then you can create as many workspaces as required. Here, I will use this Nathan workspace, and this is also a new workspace by the way. As you can see here, it has zero memories. So a workspace is where the memories will be stored. Now, to use this workspace, just click on this quick start menu, and you can select the AI coding agent that's supported by Byte Rover. I'm using Klein, so I will choose it here, and then here's a quick configuration setup. All you have to do is to click the IDE you're currently using. I'm using VS Code, so I will select this one. Now Byte Rover wants to open VS Code and install the extension, so let's just allow it. Here in VS Code, click Install Extension and Open URI. And after a while, you will have this Byte Rover extension icon on the sidebar, which means the tool is already active. Let me expand this a bit. Here, we can see the detail of the connection. If you want to connect to another account or memory workspace, you need to sign out first and then try to authorize again. If you don't see this extension, you can also install it manually from VS Code extension window. Just search for Byte Rover, and then you will find it over here. 
Ok, now go to the explorer window, and here you will see files and folders that are generated by the extension. These files are rules and MCP servers required to synchronize your AI agent with PyTrover. I have client rules, ru, and cloud.md here because I have them installed. You might see slightly different files here depending on what AI agent you have in VS Code. Ok, now that PyTrover is active, I want to try repeating my instructions again. So let's open a new client chat window here, and then also delete the index.html file as we will try to create a new one using Tailwind. Now in the chat box, I will repeat my instruction, always use Tailwind for my projects, and let client process the request again. And now you can notice here that client wants to use Byte Rover retrieve and store knowledge tool from the MCP server. First, the AI will try to fetch any existing information from Byte Rover, so let's just allow it. Ok, it finds there's no relevant info, so it will now create a new memory for our instruction. Here, it wants to store the knowledge in Byte Rover, so let's just allow it. And that's it, now the instruction is saved in Byte Rover. So if we go back to Byte Rover dashboard over here, and then open the memories menu, we can see here there is one memory item stored in Byte Rover. And that is exactly the use Tailwind CSS instruction. We can click on it to see more details. Alright, now that the memory is stored, let's get back to Klein and then start a new chat again. Here, we will send the same prompt as before, which is to build a landing page for a SaaS company. Press enter here. Now let's wait for a moment. And then let Klein access by the rover memory. Now we can see here it has retrieved the used Tailwind CSS memory, and then proceeds to create a landing page using Tailwind. We can already see here in the editor that there are Tailwind classes being used. So I will skip ahead to when this process is finished. Ok, now we can see the file, and there's the Tailwind CDN link here, and all HTML elements in this file are using Tailwind classes. So this landing page is exactly what I expected, so let's save this. Now client will want to store new information in Byte Rover memory, so uh, let's just allow it. And now the knowledge about this landing page is saved in Byte Rover. So if we go back to the dashboard and let's refresh the page, we can see here it has created several memories, one for the landing page, one for the responsive navigation bar implementation, and then another for client-side form validation. This detail will be useful when you have a new developer working for this project later. And that's how Byte Rover works in a nutshell. Next, we will see how to share this memory layer across team members and even AI coding agents. Now, let me show you another example. Suppose you bring in a new developer to work on the landing page project, and this person prefers to use cursor instead of client. Normally, that will be a problem because all previous contacts, decisions, and preferences will be lost. This new guy will have to start from scratch, but with Byte Rover, the memory can be shared even with different coding agents. So Cursor can instantly access the same key information that client used. Let's see how it works next. Here I have Cursor already open on the same landing page project. And to get Byte Rover on Cursor, you simply have to install the extension just like with VS Code. Once the extension is installed and authorized, you will see Byte Rover MCP and rules in Cursor. So uh, let's go to the settings page here, and then uh, navigate to rules, and here we can see the Byte Rover custom MCP rules. And if you go to the tools menu, you can see the Byte Rover MCP has been installed and active here. Ok, now let's close the settings, and let's ask cursor about this project, simply ask it for an overview. Let it process the request, and here cursor will ask for permission to retrieve Byte Rover knowledge, so let's allow it. And then here, you can see the same memory context used by client is being used in Cursor as well. Without Byte Rover, Cursor will have to scan your project and retrieve key information by itself. And that's how you can share contacts across coding agents with Byte Rover. With the memory synchronized between your AI agents, you can simply start a new session and then tell the AI about what you want to do. For example, maybe adding a newsletter signup feature to the landing page, and this feature will then be implemented following the coding patterns and best practices that has been stored in Byte Rover. And that's very awesome. 
Once the feature has been implemented, Byte Rover will add a new memory entry for that feature. And as you and your team continue to work on the project, the memory will only keep growing, learning from every interaction, every update, and automatically keeping track of what matters most. And by the way, this is the landing page created by the AI. I just realized we haven't seen the output until now, uh, so <laughs> sorry for that. But the output really doesn't matter in this video, as we want to learn how to create and share memory using Byte Rover. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. But overall, that's how you can use Byte Rover to share key information across organizations, projects, conversations, and even different coding agents. Because of the shared memory layer provided through Byte Rover, your team can always have the same context and memory, no matter if you're using the same AI coding agent or not. What's more, Byte Rover doesn't only store your memory, but it will self-improve and update over time as you use it. The product itself is also improving fast, with plans to support more AI agents, such as Cloud Desktop, in the future. It also plans to open source the core technology so that anyone can learn, extend, and contribute to it, which is very cool in my opinion. And now we have come to the end of this video. So, what do you think about Byte Rover? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Koei Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.